He's out there. Balcony, balcony man. No, oh, no. First sighting. He might be listening. All right, he won't be. We're live. Well, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what we've got coming up, Damo, of course. Yes. Looking forward to that. Footy. Talk about footy. footy. Been an amazing round. Yep. Jake Collar Jasney. Yes. Second half. Quite a achiever down there. I don't think I've ever spoken to him. I've only spoken to him about five times. Yeah, he's a Geelong boy. He is. And star, premiership player. Playing well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to both of those things. We're going to have a bit of a chat about the coronation, yes. of which I did not see a second. Oh, come on, Jim. Not, not, not one second. The kids loved it. They're out in the balcony, yawning. No, no, they would have been stuff. bored. Uh, shiteless. Shiteless, yeah. they were, Jim. Uh, yeah, that's what they would have been. <laughs> yes. I had a, a bit of Topics Brownless. So that's a show for you. Topics Brownless. Yeah. Right, eh? well, I've got to chat about that. <laughs> uh, g'day, Jim. Great to be with you. It is. Another week, a new week. New week. So no hosting or anything this week. I'm just going to be, um, good news for you and the listeners, I'm just going to stay with Rush Hour. I don't want to do any of the other stuff. You, you haven't had the opportunity S- to condiment. do any of the other stuff. Don't have to go overseas No one's and offered do you tipping. anything. Oh, I had it if I wanted it. No, you didn't. <laughs> Hope no, I think it. Handsome Hamish uh, knocked that right on the head. So <laughs> you'd be happy to know, Jim, I'm I'm staying. I knew that. <laughs> you knew that. I already knew that. <laughs> You'd be happy, Raps. No, nah, he's he's unreal. He's a, he's an absolute beast. He's uh, seen him with his rig out. And, um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I said that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> who was that? Uh, your man, Darcy Cameron. Oh, big Darcy. Mm. Talking about who? Isaac Quainor, IQ. Mm. Has not been beaten in a one-on-one this year. Mm-hmm. Playing good, good footy. Balanced. Really oh, never goes to ground. And the hair. Yeah. We've had him on a couple of times. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. He's done the hair. He's got yes. plaits or something. Not plaits. Yeah. Dreads. Little dreads. Dreads. Little dreadies. Yeah. Good player. Mm. Cornrows. Mm. No. Wap. <laughs> <laughs> wap, wap, wap. Now on Triple M's Rush Hour. Hurry up, Bill, and get to the rap, 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 rap. <laughs> it's Billy's All Sports Report. Legends making legends at Builders Academy. Buildersacademy.com.au. Builders Academy must be happy with you. Oh, Joke very and happy. wappy. Oh, I know. Oh. They're good boys there too. Mm. They're loving it. Uh, mm. Damo will come in and tell us about the uh, Van Ruin and Brad Close Royan, and yep. Nick Newman mm-hmm. all appealing there against their suspensions. Right. Jim, yes. we had Nick Newman on last we week. Did. We and did. Then he's got suspended. Come on and got himself suspended. What about Buddy Franklin had a goalless game against the Pies yesterday, mm-hmm. but he got booed, Jim. Why? Have we got it here. Why'd you boo him? Probably celebrate a 36 year old, wouldn't you, that's been a champion of the game? Why would you? It's been 10 years since we played Collingwood here. Why would you be one of the champions of the game? Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, well, with your horse, horse it yep. makes no sense. It's just brain he, dead. He, I didn't see all the game. He didn't knock someone out or bowl someone over no, early, he did got, he? He got booed the first time he took a mark, yeah. and that was about five minutes into the game. It no, didn't make sense. We don't no. need that. No, we don't need we that. Don't I don't understand that. it. No. Like, I, if something does well, happen during the game, that's different because that's right. then, you know, there was an incident and therefore the fans are just uh, upset upset about what happened to their player. But when it's just a champion, yeah. well, why would you do that? Well, this week, Horn Francis plays North Melbourne down in Tassie. Tassie, yep. So there'll be a few boots Probably there. will, but not. No. Well, I would hope not many. And then Tom Stewart plays Richmond Friday night and the last time they played, he collected Presti and got four weeks yep. for it. So there might be a bit of booing there. So we'll see well, what happens. Anyway, I'm with horse. Yes. Uh, NRL. Rugby league. The Storm lost to South Sydney. The Rabbitohs is too good. They're struggling. They're at five and four. They're mm. sixth on the ladder, Jim. They're yeah. just struggling a bit. And this Thursday night they play at Amy Park. The Broncos, who Broncos are top sure. of the tree. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> the Broncos, top of the tree. Yes. 130,000 people attended the matches they're saying in Magic Round right. over the weekend. So about 100,000 shy of the AFL version. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think if you bought one ticket, you got in for the whole. Oh, right. <laughs> whole, actually, you could have a, I think they gave you a caravan and a tent. You just uh, stayed there for the weekend. <laughs> so, well done. Uh, Magic Round, it goes all right for him up there. A bit of cricket. Manus Labashane. Yes. He scored 170 not out, Jim. They, some people said it was just a ridiculous knock at times. Really? Yeah, very good. For whom? Against whom? Uh, Glenn, Nor- Glenn Morgan. <laughs> yes. Against Yorkshire, Jim. Glenn Morgan. <laughs> Glenn Morgan. No, there's no N in it. Glenn Morgan. <laughs> Is that what the Germans say when you see him in the morning? <laughs> Glenn Morgan. Guten Morgan. No. Yeah, well, nearly. Same. Yeah, mm-hmm. Glenn Morgan. Glenn Morgan, yep. <laughs> 170 not out. Uh, he's also, his other previous knocks have been 64, 65. So he's seen them all right. Nice. How's Steve Smith going over there? Oh, I saw he made 30 in the first innings. I don't know what he's done since. Mm. I was interested though, because there was about a 10 minute delay. Yes. When he was out at the crease because he didn't have stem guards on the back of his helmet. Yeah. So they had, they made him go and put them on. 
That's all right. I find that astounding, Bill. Why? As a former first-class cricketer, if an umpire had told me what I could and couldn't put on my head, I would have been very strong in my response to him. No, I think you have to. I well, think I know, it's... but how's that? So Viv Richards plays now. He's not allowed to wear a cap. No, he's got to wear a helmet. Even if he prefers to bat in a cap? Yep. I assume... In a first-class game. I don't... Damo might look up the rules, but I assume the rules are you've got to wear a helmet. What about in test cricket? What if a spinner comes on? You prefer to wear a cap? Well, we'll call a cap out. Well, then why are you putting stem guards on then? Well, I think... It it doesn't make sense to me. Once you get to that level, Bill, you should be able to bat in whatever you want. All right. I understand. Different for kids. Yeah, yeah. So kids at a local level, that's totally different. Mm. I I 100% endorse them wearing a helmet. But once you're playing in a first-class game, you should be allowed to wear whatever you want. I understand where they're coming from. Hey, the NBA playoffs, you've been watching this, Jimmy boy? I saw the Lakers had a stinker. They did. Uh, They did. But they lead the series 2-1 at the minute. Uh, so they won today. Yes. Uh, the Denver Nuggets, they're leading their series 2-1. They're the favourites, aren't they, Rabsy? Yeah, they are now. And then the Boston Celtics are tied up with the 76ers 2-all. That's good series. Mm-hmm. And Miami Heat lead New York Knicks 2-1. So we're getting oh. down to the pointy end. So it's uh, be very interesting there. Well, no. Speaking of basketball, all the Boomers World Cup squad has been named. And guess what, Jim? What? No Ben Simmons. Why? I don't know. There's a squad of 18s come out today. They've got a... Um, Get it down to 12 mm-hmm. at the Cairns training camp. But some of the superstars, Della Vadova yes. is in it. Josh Giddy, Chris Golding, Jock Landale, the Havi. Haviana's in there. Oh, yeah. no. Thon Maker. Yep. <laughs> oh, Bill still gets a juggle out of it. Look at him. Look at this. Uh, Patty Mills. Face. Patty Mills. Uh, Jack White. So they're all there, but they've got to narrow it down to 12. Oh, but no Ben Simmons. That's okay. interesting, isn't it, Jim? All right. And just one more. The one Nepal. more. The Magpies went down to the uh, Firebird 67-73. But the Vixens had a one-point win thanks to Kira Austin, who shot a super shot. Two points, you might think, from the uh, bench instead of one. So, yeah. Nice. No, that's about all. It's a r- nice little wrappy there yeah. from Old Fat, and that's that. <laughs> It's a strong basketball squad, isn't it? Bloody strong. Old fat, there's... and that's that. <laughs> I think there's 10 players from the NBA. Hmm. Let me have a look. Including? Maddie Delva. Do- him. <laughs> oh, him. <laughs> Maddie Delva. Yeah. Oh, he's going again. Delva he just Del- got Del- 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 bailed out. Del- oh, Del- oh, she bailed bail out. <laughs> Damien Barrett in the studio next. It's the Rush Hour Triple oh. M. Hello, Purple. Hello, Jim. Rabsy, Bill. Damien. Yeah, going I had a, uh, what do you got? a Melbourne player at my house last night. Yes. It won't be hard for people to work out who. Oh, yep. And uh, he's t- turned to me and he said, uh, Jacob Van Roy, and he says, that, that's not a reportable offence or a suspendable offence. I said to him, I've got to put my hand over my heart. I hadn't actually seen it, right. so I don't know. I have seen it since, and I agree with him. That's a footy action to me. Well, as we sp- a clumsy footy action. Yeah, but a clumsy footy, footy action. action. As we speak, it's worthy of a two match ban. Yeah. He he will though be one of three players taking his case to the tribunal, Jim, for that hit on on Ballard. And yeah, they're, they're reasonably confident, Melbourne, that that oh, they might be, be flushed through the system, through yep. the tribunal system, to, to get him off. I the guys spoke on the Sunday Footy Show yesterday. I was in a minority, and I think you I'm were. in a minority still. That it was worthy of one week, and I say that because of the clumsy element to it, but. Um, by reports today, Ballard will play next week. Oh, so well, that's good. That, that, that's the latest. Now that can change, and that can sometimes be um, yeah put out there just as a, as, as an assistance did to the player. Did he leave the ground on a stretcher? He did, and and prior to that, he'd wow. been accidentally contacted by Cosie Pickett yeah. in in a separate incident before half time. So he'd had a couple of knocks, but the club is saying it was a it was a click to the neck, yeah. is how he described Which it. Which you worry about? You do you worry about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but again, the reports today are are favourable. So that's good. Brad Close has got to. Take his sling tackle case against. It was an Jordan interesting Dawson. one because he fell with him. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did, and and he might have a yeah. a mitigation case to, to mount there. And, and Nick Newman, um, what you, you called that. He um contacted uh, Lockie Neal on the yeah. Friday night oh. game and got him the in chin. the chin. Right. Um, I'm surprised they're taking that one up, but uh, yeah, me too. They are, and and so that they're the three cases uh, that are up. A um, couple of uh, injuries out of the weekend, Bill. Before we get onto the other stuff, the Dangerfield uh, hamstring y- oh. yet to get the public diagnosis of, of what it is, but it is going to keep him out yeah. of footy for, for some time. Well, that time they got means. four games and then the bye. So you'd think you'd nearly just say, right, hey, we'll see you after the bye. And it was six weeks he, he missed last year, yeah, wasn't it? Did, when yeah. they gave him the um, the, the mid-season, playing. pre-season. And that, that was the making of him last year, That's wasn't right. it? That's right. So I reckon it could be five weeks, yep. to be honest. They've got some injuries. Yeah, they do. I just went through their list before. Henry, De Koning, Guthrie, Rowan, Stengel, Stanley, Close, Dangerfield. 
and Guthrie's the latest, isn't he? With that, well, not the latest, but he's a he's a he's a big loss, isn't he? he is, how yeah. well, well uh, there's some good players. Played. They're yeah. all from the premiership last year. Yep, yeah. and still no sighting of of Jack Henry, who had the foot injury in the season. He's, he's running. running. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. yes. They were hopeful it wasn't going to be the the absolute long term. Have you seen the fixture for Friday? Uh, sorry for this round. There's two Friday night games yes, just for those who that. aren't yet to catch Why? up with it. Um, it it's uh, basically to mitigate the impact of of Mother's Day on the Sunday. Yeah, to, so right. to take one game away from the Sunday. There's still two on the Sunday. Normally there's three, as we know, five on the Saturday, but two on the Friday night. So uh, a West Coast um, second game um, on that. Uh, positives. We'll go there first, won't we, Jim? Yes. I, think, oh, yeah, okay. I thought we'd just, just do it today through the through the lens of the, the player as opposed to the club. Um, look, Marcus Bonson-Pelly's season to date yep. has been quite extraordinary. Um, he, he's got the 10 coaches' votes again built out of the weekend. They've just dropped. So, uh, yeah, ma- massive massive season for him. And, and, and uh, a, a really good performance against GWS. And he just controlled the first half of it. Got, got him oh, he is a superstar. Yeah, yeah. He's in the top two or three players in the game if he's not the best player in the game. Oh, I think he's been the best player in the game still. And I reckon he has been for five years, Jim. That's just, and, and I think the only downer he had was last year when he refused to publicly concede he had an injury. Yeah. And he refused to also publicly concede he had an illness. And, and they conspired to work against him last year. He still toiled through and yeah. hard. Yep. And and was very good, but very good by him is is still down on what it normally is. But he's back to the extraordinary best. Yep. Ch- Charlie Cameron, um, we discussed him a lot, but to have twenty six goals after these eight games and and the manner in which he's playing, it's it's lighting up contests, isn't it? And 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 helping Brisbane Lions get through to to where they want to be, and and that he's in a really nice position yep. at, at the early stage of the season. So um, massive tick for him. All Australian. Yeah, has been before and is well on track to, to be that person who, again. Who did you give the votes to? Because I heard you talking about this too, Jim. I want uh, Blues and Lions, Jack Payne or Josh Dunkley? Speaking of Charlie I, Cameron. I went for Dunkley, yeah. but Payne's role was extraordinary. Yeah. Again, speaking of the Coaches Association so votes, uh, f- five to Dunkley and oh, four ten. to pa- uh, Payne from, from both coaches. Okay. It was well, ten, ten and right. eight. So. Yeah. That's about yeah. right. Yeah. It's hard to argue. He was uh, good. Lo- love the Brody Mitchell story. I know it's uh, it's been oh. one that we touched on a few times throughout the course of a year, but but just to remind people that he missed seven full drafts mm. by by all clubs in the competition. Seven. He was twenty five years old before he got picked up. Took him until halfway through two thousand and eighteen to get his debut performance, and then he, as we know, maintained his place in the team in that year's grand final team from Collingwood, and has only missed four matches since, and emerged out of yesterday's game with with five key goals, and and yep. one that. Might might come second to Will Ashcroft yeah. for goal of the year. It's it may well be in the competition or conversation for it, but oh, yeah, but shame. but just the the warrior that he is and and how well he's performed, and it, it's great to see him. I think emerge as best on ground. The first time he kicked five goals, a bit like Tomahawk last week. First time he kicked eight, but yep. Bro, uh, Brody, first time he kicked. Five goals. Yeah. It's been a few of You love him to play wouldn't. with him. You yeah. just love to play with him. There's so many Collingham players you would go to war with, aren't there? Oh, and and nah. just speaking. He walks off every footy ground having yeah. given it every single thing he has. Yeah. Him. And that's Spot what on. you love about it. Just while we're on Collingwood, Rebsy, you mentioned a moment ago that you Collingwood had rec- sent out an email regarding the, the booing. Mm-hmm. I still haven't got it. So can you just enlighten our listeners as to, as to what that contains? Uh, yeah. I've just got to get it back up on my phone. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Here it is. It's just hard now. So this is released by the the Collingwood uh, Footy Club, and it's a Ned. Um, it's a Collingwood captain Darcy Moore, senior coach Craig McCraig, and CEO Craig Kelly wish to address the booing which took place at the MCG yesterday. And this is in quotations from here. We apologise to the Sydney Swans and to Lance Buddy Franklin. The club does not support booing, particularly champions of the game. Yesterday was the first time we played the Swans in a decade. At the, G. Get back, at the G, it provided an opportunity to respect the champion of the game, and we fell short. Buddy is a great of Australian football. What he has achieved on the field over a long period of time demands a high level of respect. To our members and supporters, we are on an exciting journey at Collingwood. We do not take for granted the unwavering support you provide us at every game, home or away. Our fans turn up like no other. You're the 19th player. You're loud, passionate, you're emotional. We hope the next time we get the chance to witness a champion of the game, we treat them with respect. The same respect we ask for when it comes to our players and our champions. Well, well, now, uh, I, I guess that's a pretty powerful statement. No, it is. It's well written, it's, so therefore yeah. Ned didn't write it. No, he didn't write it. But <laughs> why did Buddy get booed? We can't work it out. Look, there's a narrative being put out today that the Swan supporters last year booed Ginevan on the boundary at the SCG. Now, oh. does that make it right that mm. Collingwood supporters want to reciprocate that mm. act? I, I, I don't know, but that has been put out there today. I don't know, Bill. Yep. I mean, and that reference to that game that the Swans played for the first time in a decade, um, that game in question was the 2013 Buddy 
uh, sorry, Adam Good's game oh, where he yeah, was right. racially abused. Now, again, the fact they've actually referenced that in the statement, it just goes to show this footy club is on a on a on a very clear path and and, and what it wants to stand for and everything. Mm. And even that statement alone, I mean, you, you do wonder, don't you? I, I take the view sometimes addressing it, Bill, and tell me if you've got a different view that sometimes it almost um, M- fuels the issue. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and but having said, but they that, had to come out and say something. I you felt they did, did you? But it's, yeah. They apologise. It's not their fault. It's the bloody supporters. They've got to wake up. I like, think they've got to be better. Quite cleverly said that in that. Yeah, in I know. But, it, yeah. but it's the supporters. It's like everything, mate. The online trolls and all that. It's yep. just you just shake your head sometimes, don't you? Yeah, you do. And I reckon they're like sheep. A lot of them, they just follow each other. Yeah. Oh, he boot. Let's. Oh, let, next time he gets it long in a boot too. Yeah. So you just yeah. wonder though, in, in in ten years' time, when Buddy has retired, and you and you do reflect on it, and you if, if you actually ask yourself, why would I why would I boo him on that no, day when yeah. he was thirty six yeah. years of age? I, I I just don't get how anyone could reconcile the answer to that question. No, I'm with you. What else have we got, uh, Purple? Are we going the other way? We'll just finish off on some positives. Um, love what the power have done since losing the, the showdown, Bill. Um, five now, five yes. wins in a row now. And of their, of their uh, six wins for the year, four have been by less than 14 points. Mm. They've had a two-point win, a seven-point win, a five-point win, and a 14-point win. They're just putting it together. The most recent was the five against Essendon. And, Lucky. Um, Essendon were good. They were good. They, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't have done too much more, given they've got some, uh, some injury issues as well. But um, Zach Butters, um, we've, we've talked about Connor Rosie a lot, yep. but Zach Butters is having nearly as good a year. And, and he, I think he got the 10 votes too, Bill. Zach got 10, the game. Yeah. Rosie 6, and Miles Bergman. There you go. Uh, Lovely name. Luke Jackson finally came good for the Dockers. It was always going to take time, and and it was good to see him dominate a game. But I still felt, um, your boy, Jim, that uh, Andrew Brayshaw might have been the most dominant player in that Dockers uh, win against Northam. Certainly good numbers. I didn't see the game. But uh, his last two weeks have been much better. It's amazing, a bit like you were saying with the the Bont last year, when you actually get yourself pain-free and playing footy, it's so much easier to play. And it was a knee, wasn't it? Yeah, Yeah, he had a tendon issue in his knee. Yeah, he seems right now. Did you see the headline of uh, the paper last week about Luke Jackson? No action, Jackson. And then went on, on the West. Yeah, on the yeah. West, not yeah. here. And they, the they've West. been riding him very And then hard. declared he was earning $78,000 per mark. Yep. Wow. That was after one or two weeks, but yeah. yeah. Um, just want to give a key out to uh, Tim Tarano, who, who obviously has had some heat on him and, and, and some queries about the impact he's had. Unwarranted heat too, for mine. Yeah. Look, I, I feel, Jim, he's probably leading the Tigers best and yep. fairest. And, yeah. if, and if he's not, he's, he's in there somewhere very high. So people point out the fact that he's not a great user by foot, but he never has been. No. So that that's yeah. not new news. Yeah. You know, that's always been the, you know, he's had issues uh, you know, hitting targets by foot. But everything else he does is brilliant, yeah. I reckon. And it would have been even an even worse season than the one they've had to this point without him. So, yep. again, a tick there. A Dion uh, Prestia, too. Yeah. Oh, a just, little meat. And there you're a good player. When, when he's fit, Bill, oh, the I, I think he can still mount the case. He's, yes. um, he's as important as anyone in that Bloody team. Hope. As, as important is. as Tom Lynch, I reckon. So, yeah, and he was great in the weekend. Uh, let's head to the negatives. Jim, uh, you and I went to Cleveland many, many years ago to see what oh, the, uh, the commentators described. <laughs> no, they described that game as the worst game in, in the top in, in 10 the, worst ever in the history of the, the NFL. Professional I reckon the, the North Melbourne St. Kilda game oh, yesterday. 6-3 it was. Two field well, goals to one. It, it was no North, goals. It was uh, Cleveland <laughs> v. Seattle. It was yeah. two field goals to one. Was, they, they said it's in the top five worst games in the professional era. We read that article the next yep. day. I'll give you the half-time we, we score. Could be it. Yeah, give me the half-time score. St. Bill. Kilda were three goals, nine. This yeah. is half-time. Uh, North Melbourne, zero, seven. Just yeah. seven points. And then... And then Ten minutes into the third quarter, North was ten points down or twelve points down. <laughs> it's, anyway, and they got by the look away. of it, I didn't see it, but uh, I think they missed twice then too. Didn't yeah, they? So they, they actually did. could have got nearly level. Yeah, big. only had two goal kickers for the game. North uh, three to Larky and one to Stevenson out of the four <laughs> they ended up with. Um, quirky incident in, in that period of time, Bill, where um, they were surging to a point or a, a contextual surging North Melbourne, and uh, right. they gave away a free kick, and, and uh, Joy Simkin just decided to rip the uh, GPS out of Mateus Philippou's back and throw it some distance, <laughs> really? which cost him a 50-metre penalty. Right. And, Did it? Yeah, and probably helped Did swing the game back. Did he get extra Ks or metres? Because it went... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did that count, I wonder? I went to a meeting once at the end of a game, a team meeting at North, I won't say who the players were, but um, as uh, the coach was talking, all I could hear was this happening yeah. behind me, and I looked behind, and two pl- players were sitting about five metres apart and throwing the GPS to each other yeah, so to try and get some extra yards before it went well, huh? on. <laughs> Siebel and who? What they know. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, a bit Farida. before Siebel's oh. time. Oh, Spud Farida. <laughs> <laughs> Great man, Spud Farida. Uh, we touched on the Swans in terms of their, their loss to, to Collingwood. They've got a scoreline of three and five now. That, they were actually 
pretty impressive for three quarters they yesterday were. against the Pies. Yep. And had they had some soldiers down back, they might have just given themselves a half a chance to, to pull off a, yeah. a pretty miraculous victory, given how well Collingwood is going. But at three and five, it, it, they've set themselves a task. Yep. They've thrown two games away. Um, that game against Port Adelaide and also yep. that one against GWS when Toby mm. Green kicked um, you know, the, the match-winning goal and they kicked the last four to win it. So they're not too far off, but at the same time, they're, they're now a long way back on the ladder. So um, they've really helped. Yeah. I didn't like what they did. Um, sorry, I'll rephrase that. I don't mind what they did with Nick Dacos, no, but you've that, got to happened. then carry it through. Exactly. You, you've then yeah. got to get through the whole game. So I didn't with really your sword, Jim, but they attacked, attacked him before the game started. They then went into him after Ryan Clark, who was uh, assigned the roll on and kicked the first goal oh, for the Swans. Went and, to him then. and no surprise that Braden Maynard made oh, sure he went and sorted yeah, a few things out. Of course he did. <laughs> he would have got straight in the brothers. No, he did. He loved it. Someone yep. rang in and said uh, at the game, Buddy was into Nick Dacos and pushing and shoving him. Right. So that's why they and Buddy might have got booed. Okay. And well, I, I, okay. I didn't see that on the coverage. No, no. I I this was off, obviously either. off camera and things. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. But as a yeah. young budding star, Nick has got to expect that that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Well, well his team's going to put time into he, him. That's, he, what, Jimmy, that's what happens. He did. He just stood there, took it. Didn't get involved in the pushing and shoving. Let others do that. Yep. Maynard, they, for instance. Gave away a free kick. They did, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And yeah. and then just had a good last quarter again, yeah. as he seems to do every single game. It's a for a young star that they're going to target him. That's what happens. And then Post match said we we like it when they come to me, yep. as in the club likes it because it just means there's a there's a whole somewhere else in that club's uh, but dynamic. Didn't see, he didn't get votes. No, but but it wasn't that sort of game, Bill, and yet he still contributed. I know, yeah. I know, but it, and he just sees kickings off a little bit. Yep. So you've got to have someone run with him. You just got to be careful how you do it and yep. all that. But I reckon that works. Chris Fagan released a statement uh, yeah. yesterday regarding the Hawthorne racism component. You can clearly read into it the frustration. It's on, if you need to see the full statement, afl.com.au at the moment. And look, the, the mediation component to it is is close to happening, and yet at the same time, it's, it's not, Jim. And, no. and there's some theory that unless they do that, it's just not going to be wrapped up quickly. I've had the view from the outset, and I've actually heard nothing to suggest it still won't be the case, and that is that the litigation beyond the AFL finding on this is just going to be a given in, in, in many and varied forms. And, and how Chris Fagan and Alastair Clarkson approach it and how the, the people making the accusations also approach well, it. Well, I read Peter Jess on the weekend saying some of the most ridiculous statements I've ever heard. Like, you know, when it comes to this sort of litigation it's about the victim not about the perpetrator i'm leading it going yep. but if the perpetrators are alleged to have done something they haven't done yep, yep. what do you say we just you just as a perpetrator apparently you yeah. just got to sit there and cop that yeah day. or you turn around and go listen i'm not copping it because i didn't do it and that's the fair it, enough that's the issue at play even with the independent panel established by the afl last october and, and we're now seven and a half months since this story dropped in grand final week then there's been no right of reply to this point. It's and ludicrous. Yeah. I, I feel it's it's enough time to have to have at least had Chris Fagan and Alistair Clarkson in to, to give their versions of events. I'm with you. And yep. I, the thing I always say to people is put yourself in those two gentlemen's shoes. Yep. To be seven and a half months into an accusation, and they are heavy accusations. Which, which they are denying. And, and to mm. not have been able to once speak on your own behalf. Yeah. Imagine being in that situation. You, you, you can't put yourself in You'd be headless. Yeah. And I don't blame both and, of them. And, and equally, equally, the people making the accusations <laughs> to need to have the, their chance to, to yeah. have those claims okay. heard in, in this forum, which was meant to at least somehow get to the bottom of it. But seven and a half months in, on, on the back of the establishment of the panel in October, it's yep. it's it's already no, it's taken That's what it is. A, a time that is way too long than, than what the AFL wanted at the outset. So, right. And I'm with you. I can't from here see how it's going to be resolved to anyone's satisfaction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just, just don't. I just, can't see. There's not a, yeah, we'll send a few off again. A few. Yeah. A few. Well, we're leaving those ones over, uh, over in, in Perth. We'll just remove it from the Dockers operations and get it back to the West Coast. And it gets more injuries this week than form because they, they're they okay. They're, they're okay up until yeah, the third quarter great. of their game against Richmond. So we'll, we'll remove that aspect of it. But we're going to keep that one in Arden Street too. They've had six losses in a row now. And, and then there's Jim. not a lot there, Jim. Jim? There's not a lot. I thought there was Your after fault. two weeks. but Kick a goal. Are you worried about them? Come on, we... Jim. I was worried about him 
when you finish 17, 18, mm. 18 mm. purple, there's clearly issues. Yep. And you've they're been gonna going to take a while and, for and a Clarko to unpack. You've been going along and supporting. I don't getting... go along anywhere, Bill. I've, if I get one day off a week and I'll spend that at home. You went to Lilydale instead no, of going to watch 50th. kangaroos. <laughs> that was a mate's 50th. You'd rather go to Lily Lilydale. At least, he, at least he stays on for Triple M, mate, Bill. Yeah. What yeah. do you mean? I was in Unlike the right you. spot, the roster, yeah. and Skylighter here or whatever. Right, we he is. need to get to Sky any other buses. <laughs> uh, Hawthorne is going to have a little Ooh, closer look. Yeah, there. yeah, to Waverley Park. Yeah, they've had losses of 59, 81, 82, and now 69. Shower, JB and Bill. Speaking of Jake Collar, Jasney, yeah. missed the first three. Yes. I know you want to bring this up with him, Fat, yeah. because uh, he's very unassuming. Very. Just he's a quite a cheap. Goes about his business quietly, yeah. but missed the first three with concussion. Yep. Geelong lost them all. That's right. And then back. Next five. Tick, 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 so tick. So he tick. is the common denominator. Uh, no, he's a good player. Oh, right. <laughs> Plays down back and he can mark. Very Speaking, good mark he is. Uh, hang on, I'm going to call here. Well, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know why. Uh, Rabs. Yes. Hello. Hey, it's, uh, George, it's, it's, it's George Rubble, your bush here. I just wanted <laughs> to call. and uh, It's Stephen from Oh, no, he got that. <laughs> hang up. Hang up there. No, it's, hang up no. now. <laughs> Oh, Dave, but I caught up over the weekend on the listener app, and I've just got a few things I want to point out. Now, I heard that you want to host Tipping Point. Is yes. that right? Yes, that's right. Your, your Tipping Point was about 1997, Bin. You're currently the worst host of any quiz on any platform on Australian media. They could put you on SBS, and you'd get fired from a fourth network, mate. <laughs> if you want to host something... How about you get your rabble of a club hosting some footy games in front of more than two and a half thousand people, Vin? You're playing on a bloody construction site. They've got the goal umpires wearing hard hats. The only steal worse than the junk the Cats have imported from Qatar is your horse Steel City or Steel Shitty that's still got a lap to go in the Golden Slipper. All right. I've also been told, fan, I've had my go. I heard you wanted to have a bit of back and forth and engage in some banter before I hang up. So what would you like to ask me, Vin? You got the floor, mate. Oh, um, shit, I'm f- oh! <laughs> Where do you come from, Todd? Because you don't live in Bowen Heads. Oh. Gone. Oh. Gone. <laughs> He's given him the floor and then hung up. Yep. I had I had to think about this a question. Is, you, you say you want to have a go at it, yes. but then when you get the chance, well, the I best had, you can come up with I, is... It's like when you ring someone and you forget to ask them all the important questions. You didn't I just ask forgot. him any questions. Well, I forgot. Uh, getting back. Oh, we haven't got, got his number. Oh, just, he, he rings as different people. He, he was like it's Peter true. from Cranbourne or somebody. He was. <laughs> oh, well, oh, he's like still it. alive. What well, a has got hard hats on. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't bad. Oh. <laughs> and Steel City, come on. Steel City won a couple. Oh. Steel City was all right, Todd. Must oh. be very happy with your job. Legends, making legends at Builders Academy. Oh, See huh? the inflections? Yeah, good, man. It's not. Inflection, that's your singing. Jim, you'll be happy to know that I finally got over my addiction to chocolate, marshmallows and nuts. I won't lie, Jim. It's been a rocky road. Oh, my God. So you got a joke. (laughs) And uh, that's how we finish the show with a joke. So uh, let's go with one. Here it is. That's this it, is Rabbit. Billy's joke. That legends and legends Rabbit. at Builders Academy. Buildersacademy.com.au. Are you still laughing? We're giving you the chance to tell a joke. Back for a third week, Builders Academy. They mm. must be happy. Legends, no. making <laughs> legends at Builders Academy. Oh, See the inflection. The inflection. Inflections. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Joe went on a Dolly Parton diet, Jim. Oh, right. It made Jolene, Jolene, oh. Jolene. <laughs> What the hell? Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Oh my God. Good luck, Rabs. Good Rabs. luck. Good luck today, that, Rabs. Jolene. That, Jolene. That, that, you know that's crap. No, no. You a, know you do. It's a dad no, joke. Just admit, you know that one's rubbish, don't you? Mm, no. No. <laughs> I'm giving it to you. Oh, Rabs! You couldn't even say the word, could you? You just went. <laughs> it was actually a good joke. No, it wasn't. Look at him. <laughs> He's even acknowledging it no, was crap. Actually, it's been rescinded. Oh! That's it, Robert. That's, That's a, what it deserves. That's a half. Oh, Jolene. <laughs>